How's it going, everyone? This is me without Magic Mask, and this is me with Magic Mask. How's it going? This is Whit from Wits End Media, and today we're going to be going over the Magic Mask, which can be found within the color page within DaVinci Resolve. It is a great tool that I use all the time with my color grading and can really make your project stand out from the rest. Before we get any further, though, I do need to mention that this is only found within DaVinci Resolve Studio. You cannot do this in the free version. So if you do have the free version, I would strongly suggest upgrading or try to find a different solution because this tool, unfortunately, cannot be used. But with the free version, there's still so much you can do, so don't feel obligated to go to the studio version if you don't have to. But without further ado, let me show you how I did this technique. Let's jump right into Resolve. All right, everybody, so we're inside DaVinci Resolve. I got my project created, I got my footage out, and we're all good to go. So the f what we need to do is go to the color page. And now that we're inside here, I actually already have a basic grade, not basic, but I have my color grade already done, and all I need left to do is add my mask and the noise reduction. Uh, I suggest doing noise reduction at the very end. It just will really bog down your system. So let's go to the mask. So what we need to be is on this page right here, and you'll know it'll say magic mask object. And so inside of here, we have a bunch of different controls. These are the mapping. I, would, I don't even know if they're called mapping, but made for they're used for the tracking. So when you create your mask, if you want to track it forward and backwards and all that, um, these are your eyedroppers of what you do and don't want in your thing. This is the invert, a mask thing, and then just a bunch of random stuff. That if you want to know, you can do your own research, but I'm just going to do a basic. So, and there also, just for reference, there's two different types of th mask you have. You can have a person or an object mask. Even with people, I find it work better with object mask. I just, maybe I'm doing some wrong, but I just find it much easier. So with our object mask grade, we're gonna select the plus dropper and let's go over to me. And we're just gonna draw a bunch of squigglies. Nothing in particular, literally just random, just covering everything that I want in my mask like that. And you saw it turned red. That's cause I actually have this button on right here. If you don't have that on, it'll just look like that. But if you click this button, it will show you what you don't do and don't have in your mask. Um, I'm also going to click this negative eyedropper. It's just kind of safety. And I'm just going to go just random in this background just to be safe. You never know. And we can see right here there's this little weird area. Uh, I'm going to try going back with my plus dropper. And let's just draw some lines. And even though this may look bad, it won't be bad. And I'll show you why in a minute. Um, I do want to take my negative dropper, though, and come back over here. So I can see. Honestly, let's just delete that lot. And as you can see right here with our tracks, we have the different strokes. So every time I make a new line, like let's say example, that blue one, it'll make another one. So we're going to delete that. We definitely don't need that. And we're going to delete stroke five. and should be good. I'm still going to go back this negative. It's still showing up. There we go. So now we got a nice clean mask around myself. It's a little weird over here, but it'll be fine. From there, um, what I'm going to want to do is track this mask. Um, if it's just a, a picture and you don't have anything to track, you can completely skip this process. But since I'm going to be moving and it's a video, I'm going to track it. So this is going to take a little bit. So I'm going to click this and I'll see you back here in a second. Also, um, while I'm in the middle of tracking this, I rec realized I may have not said it, but when you're tracking, I always find it easier to click this little button right here with the arrows going forward and backwards. That's going to track forward and backwards. You can use these other ones and it will like track to the end or and then there's like a play and pause button. And honestly, I find it much more easier just to track forward and backwards. It gets a complete good mask and yeah, so... Once this mask is finished um, tracking, well, I'll show you the rest. Alrighty, guys, so my mask is done tracking. Um, I can confirm this because it has this green check mark right here where it says overall track and blue line. So we're good. It's all tracked. Um, I can turn this off now, that toggle mask overlay. And what I was talking about earlier with I said we don't need to worry about that area right there is we have this blur radius. This is the only one I've ever used out of all these different things. So I'm just gonna click that. And I always find 40 
to be the sweet spot. Um, under can maybe get a little too unblocky and too much. It'll just be weird. So um, I'm also going to invert this mask because what I'm going to make color grade changes to it, and I want it to happen actually to the background and not myself. So we're going to click this little invert button. We're good. And so I actually just want to darken up the background so it brings out the foreground a little bit more. So I'm going to bring the gain down. I mean the lift, I'm sorry. The gamma down. And then the gain. That's all I really want to do. You can see it on and off, how much of a difference it makes. And if you really noticed over here, it's really, you barely notice that. So with this, you don't have to be always 100% precise. With the mask though, you can do about anything you really want, um, either on the object or the background. You can change all these controls and you can go to HDR. Honestly, that's probably all I use it for. I don't know what the max and limitations are with this. I haven't really pushed it to the max, but you can do some really cool stuff and it just helps separate the foreground from a background of an object. So. As a bonus, I actually have one extra thing I want to show, and we're going to bring it to our timeline. And we have this picture, and you may be wondering why I'm doing this. And it's a cool thing. You go to Retime and Scaling. If your picture isn't really right, go to Scaling and Fill, and it'll fill your image to the um, project. So let's go to the color page, and... What I want to show you is that with the magic mask, you can actually mask multiple different things at the same time. So um, we're going to go to this plus again, and let's go over this one, over that, that one, that, 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 and that. We'll go to our task mask overlay or toggle mask overlay. And now you can see that all of these are selected separately. So it's not by like everything has to be connected. I just want to make that quick point if I was wondering. But um, now I'm going to click the invert button. And I was, let's just show you. Let's um, bring the temperature all the way up. It's going to turn orange. You can see how all of these different objects didn't get affected, or I guess did get affected because they didn't have this um, 4,000 orange tint, which looks really bad. But the point I was trying to make with this picture is that you can mask more than one object. And since this is also a picture, I wouldn't have to track it or anything. And, and you can even see without the blur radius, this looks pretty dang good. Like there's a little bit edges, but on this one, it's about perfect. This one's definitely perfect. That one's a little weird once you get down here because it has this bar over it, so I'd probably need to add, like, another plus. There we go. Still a little bit orange there. But And then if we add the blur radius, let's just do 40. I mean, that's pretty spot on. I'm not going to lie. So that's it for the tutorial. Um, I love Magic Mask. I use it all the time. I hope you guys f find as much use in it as I do. And as always, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. Or if you have something to say or some I should maybe add in the videos. Or just leave your thoughts, ideas down there. Um, make sure to like, subscribe, and check out some of my other videos. Um, thanks for watching and have a great day.